On an autumn evening in Palmer, 2005, a woman we'll call Jane Doe was washing dishes after dinner. When her daughter asked to go outside and play, Minutes later, Jane heard a strange sound outside. She caught sight of a small, childlike figure darting through the trees. The figure suddenly raced away, faster than any child she had ever seen. Could it have been something else? Legends say that small, malevolent creatures haunt the Alaskan wilderness. Whatever it was, her daughter was nowhere to be found and has not been seen since. Inside the vast frontier of Alaska is a mysterious triangle where each year, five out of every thousand people go missing. Something out there. Three investigators look for answers. Jax, a former police officer. Ken, a specialist in strange phenomena. And Tommy, an expert on Alaskan legends. Together, they uncover mysterious sightings and ancient legends, exploring the possibilities of those who go Missing in Alaska. A lot of little places to hide in here, Ken. I see that. Pretty dense brush all through here. The team begins their investigation, exploring the woods behind the town of Palmer, where the young girl went missing. Her family has since moved away. Hey, guys, can we stop for a second? I'm getting a little winded. Yeah. So I got to ask, I know your wheels are spinning. What's your theory? So check it out. Other than the missing girl, all of the children of Palmer were accounted for at the time she vanished, right? Right. That's, true. That's what you said? So then who was this small childlike figure that the mother reported seeing? And all over the world, you have these enduring legends of these little elves, fairies, pixies. In Asia, you have the Nitaweo. In Africa, the Agagwe. Every continent has different types of little gnome-like creatures. Diminutive human-like beings are among the most fabled entities of all time. The more famous of these legends have become commonplace in modern culture. Leprechauns, which originated in Ireland. Elves, descended from Norse mythology. And the dwarves of Germanic folklore. Some are viewed as benevolent. Others as pranksters who hide gold or steal food. But the Alaskan versions are painted as much more sinister. I've heard stories you know, all my life from other tribes up north of here, the Yupik, they have the Ensign Rock, and all the parents tell the kids not to stay out after dark, that they're trying to come and take your kids away. The archetype of the Alaskan gnome is a stout, powerful figure about three and a half feet tall, bearing vicious claws and teeth, with clothing made from animals and other natural materials. They are also said to be incredibly fast and have a nasty, aggressive disposition. So you have stories of little gnome-like uh, creatures here in Alaska? Yes, little, little, little people, they, they've called them, or, or gnome-like. In Alaskan lore, these stories of these small beings are terrifying and go back centuries. Different tribes give them different names, Urchinhawk, Jinxiak, Aminarok, but they're all described the same, violent, malicious. They'll kidnap you or even kill you if you cross them. All right, guys, we need to get, moving? get to the top. Yeah, it's yeah. starting to get dark here. Ken always has interesting theories about missing person cases in the Alaska Triangle. But right now, I'm thinking either this is a natural predator, like a bear or a wolf, or even more likely, a human predator. As an investigator, my mind tends to go there in cases like these. 
I'm seeing all kinds of animal tracks right here. I got moose track here and a wolf, looks like a wolf track there. Very large canine. Definitely a, a sign that there are a lot of living things out here. After seeing signs of wolf out here, it makes me wonder if that's what the missing girl's mother saw. You know, when you're nervous and you have an active imagination, maybe you think you saw a small person when you actually just saw an animal. Hey, guys, what's this? Hey, who's that? A rabbit's foot? That's a rabbit's foot. Something was chewing on it. Chewing on it right all the there. flesh off of that. Hey, look at that. It's like blood. I don't see any blood on the ground anywhere. Oh, there's no tracks around here. The leaf litter is too thick. Finding blood in the forest is not that unusual. Animals make kills out here all the time. But we're investigating a missing person case, so it's important that we examine every piece of evidence that we find. I think we need to take some of this blood and have Figure it Figure out what it is. It's a good idea to make sure this isn't human blood on this tree. I don't think it is, but the lab will answer that question for sure. As Jax takes the blood sample in for analysis, Ken and Tommy decide to investigate the gnome theory further. They meet with a local native named Jerry, who's an expert on Alaskan legends of little people. So we're investigating uh, a disappearance. A small girl disappeared. And um, what's really strange is that the mother claims that she saw this little figure, like a little person maybe, right around the time that her daughter vanished. There's been many, many stories of the little people. They're Ichjinghaks or Jinxiaks. They're powerful little people. Do you think that these little people could somehow be connected to the disappearance of this little girl? Very possible. There's many stories of children not coming back. Supposing we wanted to go find these little people. Up in mountains, they live in caves. You will find little things that they leave behind, bones. Bones? Animal parts. Mm. There's stories of them stealing caribou meat. They leave no tracks. Jerry's description of the gnomes makes them seem very primitive, almost caveman-like. And it supports the idea that whatever they are, they could be very uncivilized, almost dangerous. With the information from Jerry to ponder, Ken goes to meet with Jax, who has results from the blood sample analysis. What do we got? So here's our sample, all right? Yeah. We have it tested against five other things. First thing I wanted to have them roll out was human blood. Sure. All right? Bears, because they roam the area. Moose, we obviously saw some signs. Saw of some droppings, yeah, yeah. And then a rabbit. We did find that rabbit. And the last, and this is what it came positive for, is caribou. Finding caribou blood several feet up on a tree is highly unusual. A likely explanation is that a hunter bagged a caribou, passed the tree, and wiped some blood off or something. But we didn't see drag marks, and I can't help but think of the folklore we heard from Jerry. Well, check this out. This is really crazy, because Jerry was just telling us that the Alaska gnomes, the Jinxiok, that's what he was primarily calling them, supposedly don't leave any tracks, and their primary food source, that's the caribou. Suppose one of these beings, because they're super strong, super fast, was actually carrying a dead caribou and smashed the carcass up against a tree, and that was the result of the blood left dripping down the tree. I don't know, man. I know. You know I always hear you out, but you know I always have a hard time with some of these things, you know? I mean, I need to see a lot more evidence than what we got right now. We've seen some pretty crazy things here in Alaska. But to jump to a gnome theory based on some blood on a tree is quite a stretch. I still think that a girl could have been snatched by a human predator. And if not that, then a bear is the next obvious guess. I think that what we need to do is set up a, a trap, put caribou meat in an area near where we found the blood splatter on the tree, and use a GPS tracking device. We can monitor it from our phone. After tracking down some caribou meat from a local hunter, the team heads out to plant it as bait in hopes of identifying whatever is eating caribou in the mountains behind Palmer. Got all our gear? I got the cameras. I've got the meat. 
infrareds in my back. Let's go. All right. Cool. Lead on. We've got to hike up the mountain again behind Palmer, this time in the dark, to the spot where we found the caribou blood. <sighs> Feel the burn, Ken. Is this it, Tommy? Yeah, I think over here is where we're at. Does it look familiar? Yeah, yeah, right here. We probably want to set the camera uphill facing down. That yeah. way we have a wider coverage. Exactly. There. Good idea. Figure out where you want to put the uh, caribou meat. Right. We're going to attach a thermal imaging camera to a tree facing the caribou meat. So if anything or anyone touches the meat, we'll get video. And looks good. Big chunk of meat. Yeah, I'm going to cut it right through here, and we're going to insert the tracker there, OK? All righty. With the GPS tracker in place, we'll get a message on our smartphone if there's any movement of the caribou meat, which means we can leave the area. Hopefully, with us gone, that'll encourage something to take it. Maybe a little wider. All right, looks like it's running. We've got a good signal. Next step here is if it moves, it, it'll alert us. Good deal. You know, guys, I got to tell you, there's actually some scientific basis to believe that these gnomes, if that's what we're going to call them, are actual flesh and blood creatures, and I'll tell you why. 2003, on the island of Flores, which is in Indonesia, they discovered bones of a very small hominid, Homo floresiensis. Standing a mere three and a half feet tall, Homo floresiensis lived alongside modern humans until 12,000 years ago. Despite their small brain, they are believed to have built boats and used stone tools, as well as being incredibly successful hunters. Who's to say that they might not have migrated across from Asia into North America when the land bridge still existed, right? So, I mean, we could essentially be talking about an archaic, basal, relic, hominid form remaining undetected somewhere here in the wilderness of Alaska. It is possible. Yeah. All right. Who's that? Who's that? Did you guys hear that? I don't know, guys. That could have just been a dying animal. I think it was a snowshoe hare. Snowshoe hares are common in Alaska and are known for their sharp, shrill cry. What direction did it come from, guys? Guys, it's over here. Let me get the thermal image out. This way. Yeah. I pull out my smartphone, which has a special thermal adapter. It will show any residual heat signatures in the darkness. This direction, huh, Ken? Yeah, it was right over here. Hold on, guys. Picking something up over here. Guys, get, get over here. Oh, what is that? That's weird, man. Oh, man. What the heck is that? Our thermal imager picks up a couple of war marks on a log. Heat dissipates quickly, so whatever left those marks must have been right by us. Something warm had stepped there, huh? It's like something was just standing right there. There's something moving around out here. Obviously, we don't know what that something is. These marks could have been left here by anything. Maybe a wolf caught a rabbit here, and that could explain the noises that we heard, too. Well, I'm pretty sure that sound was a hare. They're pretty common here. I think we need to get moving and let our bait have a chance to work and do its thing here. I agree. Us tramping around the woods is just going to ward something off. Yeah. What do you think, Ken? I think I'm getting pretty creeped out right now. Let's go. By the next morning, with no sign of movement from the GPS tracker, the team decides to continue their investigation by seeking out new witnesses who have stories of gnomes in the area. Jax meets with a local security officer, Dean Spradlin. He claims to have had a highly unusual experience just a few years ago. We're out here in, in Alaska. We're kind of exploring the Alaskan Triangle areas and, and anomalies. Uh, what is exactly the case you're investigating? The girl who turned up missing 10 years ago? Exactly. That's why we're here. OK, so you're familiar with that story. Very familiar with it. So I'm assuming why it's still on people's minds. Yeah, and that girl's still missing. So it's still, still an open, open, cold case right now? Yeah, we still don't know what happened to her. It sounds so strange, but 
A lot of our information has led us to this area because we're looking for a possibility of creatures that are, are like gnomes. Gnomes could be behind it. Really? Actually, gnomes aren't that unusual to hear about in this town. Well, Halloween, you know, most towns, the kids go trick-or-treating until late into the evening. Here, they, they shut down by 8 o'clock at the latest. I found that out the hard way my first uh, Halloween here several years ago. Really? Yeah, I was actually out at about 8.30 thinking that I was going to be looking for rowdy teenagers. And I received a call about checking out a strange disturbance in a nearby residential area. So I'm walking to where the report was, was given. And the only light is what's coming from my flashlight. And all of a sudden, a rock crashes behind me. Well, I turn around to see, you know, what was that? And, uh, and a little person throws another rock the same size. It was a rock that I could barely pick up, let alone throw it. So you saw what threw it at you? It looked like a little man. It's like a man-child. But the build, the demeanor, the face of, of a man. But like, like I said, I only got a glimpse. But you saw enough of it to think that it was a possibility that it was a gnome. I can't deny the possibility of it. Uh, everywhere else, it sounds like folklore, superstition. But I do know what I saw. A child could not have thrown rocks the size that he's describing. So I'd say this is an unusual story. But we still need to find hard evidence that these gnomes exist. What, what, where would these gnomes live? Well, some people think they live underground. We have over 600,000 square miles of wilderness in Alaska. We have lots of places where nobody's ever been. We have a lot of unexplored territory. Who knows what's out there? Is there caves in this area? Well, it's not caves like you would think of caves, but there's ice caves. You think you could point them out to, on a map for me? Yeah, if you got a map. Have you been right there? Yeah, I've been there. So. OK, so it's on a glacier? Yeah. So we're See, here. We're here right there. Oh, the, the Matanuska Glacier? Yes. I definitely think that we need to investigate these caves for any signs of these so-called gnomes. Really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, you're welcome. And be safe out there. OK, take care of yourself. As Jax finishes his meeting with Officer Spradlin, Ken and Tommy seek out another local who claims to have experience with these mysterious gnomes. Hi, I'm Ken. Hi, Ken. Sarah here. Sarah volunteers her time working with kids at a local community center. According to her, all the children are afraid that gnomes are lurking in the area. Sarah, this is such a cool little playground, and yet there's no kids here. Why is that? Uh, it's, well, it's starting to get late at night, and these little Iminarks, they came out late at night. I'm scared of them myself. Mm -hmm. I know I've heard about um, children being abducted, and um, some kids ran to me. Um, they said there, there was something chasing them from the woods. Uh, do you think they were being chased by the Imanarok? It's a possibility that there's an Imanarok around the neighborhood. And, you know, these are dangerous creatures. I've always heard that these Imanaroks are very strong and powerful. Clearly, there's something in this area that's being witnessed from time to time. And I'm hoping that we'll get a good look at it from our thermal camera up on the mountain. All right, thank awesome. you. Sure. Be safe. It's getting dark, man. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Check this out. Our tracker is, is... What? No way. It's moved. The tracker in our caribou meter is on the move, which means something has taken it. We've got to grab Jax, get on it, and follow it right away. OK. Why do so many people go missing in Alaska? Is it purely because of the rugged landscape and aggressive predators? Or are there other reasons lurking in this vast terrain? A mother sees a small, unknown being just before her daughter goes missing. Could native stories of vicious gnomes be more truth than legend? The team has just sprung a trap that could answer that question. You got everything, guys? I've got the GPS here. Yeah, have we got any other notifications? Well, it's still working, but it is not moving. It's just stationary. We just have the final location, last, yeah. last transmitted. Right. The best part about using a GPS tracker in our bait is we have a last known location transmitted to us. We need to get to that spot quick, because whatever took our bait could still be in the area.
We still got a ways, but we're on the right path. The first thing that we want to do is check the original location where we left the bait and see if there's any clues there. Maybe we can determine what moved the GPS before we track it down. There's a the camera right there. Camera looks good. So this meat's right there. Oh, it's gone. You see any tracks? Nothing. All right, well, we got a fan out right here. All right. You can, ain't they? Nothing. What about you? No, just brush. You guys got anything? No. No. I'm going to take the trail cam back to the truck, see if we got anything on here. I'd have caught something. Since we don't have any clues from the scene of what we're dealing with here, it's important to get eyes on the footage right away. Even if this is just an animal, we need to know what kind of animal for safety's sake. You got your bear spray, Tommy? I do, in the pack. We got about a quarter mile to go, so you and I got to hoof it. I think you can meet us back down at the truck. Something to be eating that meat out there, so you guys be careful. Give us a shout as soon as you get there, OK? I will. OK. This is the second time we found signs of something in the forest without finding any tracks nearby. Back when we found the blood on the tree, there were lots of leaves on the ground, so that could have prevented tracks. And here, the ground is hard enough that maybe something could have passed through here without leaving any marks. But Jerry also talked about how Alaskan gnomes don't leave tracks. The natives who established this lore centuries ago were expert trackers, so you have to give that detail some credibility. Is there an animal that walks lightly enough to avoid leaving tracks, or does this gnome legend have some truth to it? Hopefully, the video will tell us. That's just weird. What is that? This is the closest we're going to get. It's going to be within 10, 15 feet of here. You got the big spotlight. Yeah, so. yeah, I got it. I'll scan this brush. Oh, man, look at this. It's a mess, man. This might take us a while. I'm not seeing anything. Don't give up yet. It's got to be over here. <sighs> Ken, it's down there. That's it. You pull it out? Yeah, I got it. All right, cool. We hop down. Let's see it. I mean, we've got some massive scratches. Where's the meat? It was right there. There's no meat. Hey, guys, are you up there? Yeah, I got you, man. What's going on? Hey, you guys aren't going to believe this. We got something on the trail cam. You guys need to come down and check it out. All right, we're on our way. What do you got for us, buddy? And check this out. See that? Nice. Wait, 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 rewind it. Back it, back it up. Oh, what is that? Something small. You can't tell what it is, though. This shape on the screen is hard to make out. Look at that. That's hauling ass. What do you think, Ken? Um, actually, that kind of appears humanoid. And there's no doubt that whatever that is, it took our bait. The figure in this footage is hard to pin down. I can see how it might be a small person hunched over. But it could be a fox or a wolf. It's just not clear. Well, guys, what do we do now? I've been thinking about this. So here's our map, guys. Right? The green marker is where we left the GPS. The yellow one is where we found it. And the red marker is the ice caves. Look over right there. Look what that is. It's an exact straight line. Whoever took that meat was heading towards those caves. So are you saying we need to head out there? We need to go to those caves. Let's do it. All right, guys, let's pack it up and let's get to the ice caves in the morning. Obviously, the ice caves are where this investigation has to go next. And it could be right into the den of the vicious Jinxiok.
Alaska is known for the biggest animals on the continent. But could the most dangerous creature here be a small one? Horrifying tales of aggressive, violent gnomes permeate native legends. And local resident Natalie Vega believes she had a close encounter with one. Our dog ran away, and the next morning, our neighbor called us and said that they saw our dog a few miles away in some remote area. And I called my friend Allie and asked her if she could look for the dog with me. We get to the area, and we get out. And Allie saw blood on the ground. And then we start calling for our dog. And as we're calling, we get hit with a bunch of snow. And we turn around, and I saw something move. It was small, maybe three feet tall. And it had the face of an old man covered in moss and sticks and dirt. It was just horrid. All of a sudden, it just moved so fast. We couldn't believe it. We were so scared, we ran to the car and just drove off. We never saw the dog again. After tracking their stolen bay toward the Matanuska Glacier, the team heads out to search for ice caves. And if they find them, to see if anything might be living inside them. Ice caves would be a great dwelling for something that doesn't want to be found. We have a little stop up here where the guy's been gracious enough to loan us his snow machine so we can get out to the glacier. Well, looks like here we go, and I think, uh, yeah, there's our machines. It is unsafe for large vehicles to traverse a glacier because of the shifting nature of its surface. The team will have to use snowmobiles to approach the ice caves. But the machines will only take them to a point where the terrain becomes too rough. Then they will have to hike the rest of the way to the caves. Matanuska Glacier is the largest accessible glacier in Alaska. At four miles wide and 26 miles long, it has been carving its way through a valley for the last 10,000 years, moving at a rate of one foot per day. Six people are known to have died here, with dozens of others reported missing. Is that because of the ever-shifting and unpredictable landscape, or something more sinister? Guys, definitely think with all this ice, we need our crampons today. Hey guys, we got to be careful out here, you know, with this warm weather, the sun beating down. We got to watch our step, make sure we don't step in any crevasses. How deep are we talking? Some have been known to swallow up airplanes. Really? Let's head off that way, up that first mound there. Let's do it. A lot of this glacier is uncharted because it changes constantly. Ooh. But some local guides said the kind of caves that we're looking for were recently seen due north of here. Walking on glacier ice, especially glacier ice covered in snow, is very dangerous. It's important to take it very slow and with each step to make sure there's not a crevasse underneath you. Whoa, what we got up there, Ken? You guys seeing this? Wow, this look at that. Bad, it's got to be what the cop said. Check it out. After trekking across the glacier, we finally see our very first ice cave. This is extremely exciting. It's what we've been waiting for. We've been searching for evidence of these proto-pygmies. Wow. And this would make a perfect habitat for some small and rarely seen creature. Literally a cave of ice, smooth as glass. Pretty incredible. These caves are awe-inspiring, but also dangerous. A lot are formed by meltwater runoff, which erodes them and makes them weak, and they are known to collapse suddenly. So we have to be on guard. 
You know, guys, it goes without saying, if we're looking for a small hominid, which is what I think we're looking for here, a cave makes perfect sense. They're excellent defensive fortifications because they only have like one entrance. You can stockpile weapons or food or whatever. Don't leave any stone unturned. Look into every little small opening, hole, cut, whatever. We'll do it. Let's go. I've done a lot of research in caves, but I've never been in a glacier cave. I mean, here you have a structure that's constructed of frozen water. It's rather mesmerizing, but I can't lose sight of the fact that I'm in an extremely volatile and dangerous situation. I could slip and fall on my head. I could step into a crevasse and disappear, never to be seen again. Tommy, I want to take this a little slow. It's warm it's been today. I don't, I don't feel like taking a bath right now. Well, that's plain feels, smart. Feels pretty solid, buddy. Look at these walls, Tommy. Look how far you can see inside of them. Yeah. Guys, this thing goes in pretty deep here. Oh, well, this indentation right here is natural little cove. <clears throat> Watch your step. Look at this, Tommy. Hey, Ken! Ken, check it out. Ken, yeah, check this out. Come over here. That does not belong here. All right, I'm coming, guys. Hold on. Where are you? Come back here. It's low. Watch your head. It's slippery, too. Watch your step. This way. Ken, you gotta check this out. Crap. Look at this, Tommy. Hey, Ken! Ken, check it out. Ken, you gotta check this out. Come over here. That does not belong here. Ken, you gotta check this out. Crap. You got a caribou rack here. De definitely not a normal place to find something like this. As far as I know, Tommy, caribou don't go to die in places like this. No, nah, they're on tundra, usually flat land. No, but it is common for a predator to basically yeah. drag something you know, into a cave. Yes. But look around, there's no tracks. I mean, we've got glacier silt. We have some sort of paw print, hoof print, right? Bottom line is, this does not belong here. Want to move this backside? Yeah, we got a lot of ground to cover. Let's keep going. The team continues their trek to find deeper caves in the area. If the gnomes of Alaskan legend are real, it's believed they live in groups and sometimes keep their kidnapping victims in their underground lairs with them, requiring a larger space. Look up ahead, Ken. Wow. Looks like a bigger cave. This is what we're looking for, guys. We find a second cave that appears to go much deeper into the ice and potentially offer a lot more shelter. This could be the perfect place for something to move in, set up camp, and stay hidden. Be careful, guys. Look how, look how much this thing's melting. It's be melting. Careful. You got right. all that water running down there. What's the plan here? All right. Well, well, what do you think about Ken and I going down and you monitoring us from here? Good idea. The team decides the safest approach is to have Tommy remain outside as backup in case there are any dangerous shifts in the ice. Jax and Ken will be equipped with wireless cameras, which Tommy can use to follow their progress. Let's go. All right, be safe. <sighs> Looks like it gets pretty tiny in here, Ken. Thing is endless. Thanks, so Seven. I know this is gonna be tight, but I think I'm gonna go that way. Maybe this will open up when I pop through this crap. I mean, I trust you, man. If you think you can make it, that looks like a pretty tight squeeze. Are you sure? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Keep on comms. You got your walkie, right? Yeah, I got my walkie. All right. 
All right, be careful. Because these gnomes are supposed to be quite small, I decided to investigate a crawl space. It's a bit claustrophobic for me. Before a gnome, it would have plenty of room. I just have to keep my cool and keep pressing forward. Tommy, it's Jax, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Ken and I have split up. Can you see my feed? Yeah, I got you here on the screen. OK, still a good signal? Good signal. All right, I'm pressing forward. Careful down there. I also want to be careful not to get out of communication range. If I get in trouble, Tommy's my only link to the outside world. Tommy, come in. Over. Can you hear me? Over. I can hear you, Ken. Yes. I'm going to go down this corridor. You copy? Uh, be safe there, man. Yeah, we will do. Uh, this looks pretty amazing. Our greatest concern while investigating this cave is shifting ice. Because the glacier is constantly moving, a shift nearby could create a chain reaction, resulting in a collapse of the cave. All kinds of little nooks and crannies. And it looks worn down. It looks like something's been moving through here. You see what I'm seeing? What is that? I don't know yet. I gotta get closer. Yeah, it's amazingly bright in here. Really, really bright. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Tommy, are you seeing this? It's another antler like we found in the other cave. Just one rack. That's as far as I can go. You better come on out then. All right, I'm going to bring the antler with me, so it'll take me a second. Tommy, did you hear that? Over. Tommy, I'm hearing something. Do you hear that? Over. Hey, Jax, I'm not hearing anything from Ken. Can you can you see him or hear him? Tommy, I got nothing. I can't see him. I don't know where he's at. Move. Move. Ken, can you hear me? Jack, why don't you come on out here? I'm not sure where Ken's at. We need to regroup here. All right, I'm coming out. Somewhere inside the ice caves, Ken and the cameraman following him are no longer in communication with the others. The team doesn't know if they're lost or hurt. Ken, Ken, are you there? Check this thing out. Another caribou rack, man. Wow. What's going on with Ken? Nothing. I'm not hearing anything. Ken is Jax. Do you read? Jax, Tommy, do you copy? Over. Hey, guys. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm completely turned around in this cave, and I'm hearing cracking ice. I'm trying to find my way out of here. Over. Ken, it's Jax. Do you read? It's getting warmer. You think, uh, I mean, shoot, I don't want to. I mean, this thing looked pretty stable where I was, but you know, he could have gone down somewhere smaller where the ice is melting. Man, I'm getting worried. Yeah. Did you hear that? I think I hear him. Ken, where are you? Ken! Yeah! Tommy, hurry up! All right, I'm coming. Ken! 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 Jack! Tommy, I hear him! Ken! How are you? Ah. You need help? Ah. Come on, bud. Come on. Ah. Oh my God. Oh, you it? Oh, I got totally lost. You all right? I thought the ice was going to cave down right onto my head. I couldn't reach you guys. Yeah. Ken's experience in the caves is closely related to the gnome legends in Alaska. Look. 
It's said that they can disorient you and lead you into danger, and they'll do it just for fun. Obviously, Ken could have just taken a wrong turn or something, but it does make you think. So we yeah. say we get out of here for the day. Yeah, the sun's going down. It's going to be dark here soon. All right. So glad to see you guys. I bet. We were very, very worried, man. With the mystery of the missing girl still not solved, the team heads back into town to consider everything they've found during their investigation. Okay, guys, so what do we got? Let's review the evidence. We have the blood on the tree, and then we have the small figure that we got on the trail cam. It was just a small image of something moving. It was something. It was a blur, but it was small and it was fast. And yeah. we also heard that noise out there. Remember, that was kind of like a weird high-pitched whinny. Tommy thought it was a snowshoe hair. Well, earlier today, I was reviewing the footage from the ice cave, and right before the ice started cracking, there was an odd sound. But I didn't notice it at the time. There was almost like an undertone to that sound. OK, here we go. This is the recording. Play that back. Turn the volume up right here. You hear that? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Weird. That sounds a lot like the noise we heard in the forest the other night. There was nothing out there but us, OK? It was the ice and us. Right. Gnomes are known to be tricksters and mischievous. Perhaps they've been toying with us this whole time, leaving clues that are big enough to hint at their existence, but too small to prove anything. Maybe by going in that ice cave, we were essentially invading their domain. Too strange, guys. Yeah, it was odd. For now, the team is unable to tie the young girl's disappearance to the fabled gnomes of Alaska. But history proves that small humanoid beings have existed and even thrived on our planet. Could Alaska be their new breeding ground? In these rugged wilds, a creature lacking in size would have to compensate through cunning. Who's that? or viciousness. And if native legends are true, such violent creatures could be one of the reasons people go missing in Alaska.